Praise the Lord. It's good to see you, uh, uh, be with you again. And uh, hope that we can get this uh, ministry back up and going again. We've had a little trouble with our uh, video getting it to upload, so we're going to try it again. I'd like for you to turn with me, if you will, into your Bibles into Matthew chapter 24. We want to talk uh, just a little bit today about how close we are to the end. Uh, we don't really know just when the Lord is going to come. We don't really know the day and or the hour. In fact, Matthew 24, uh, looking at verse number 36, says, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as w the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in those days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered in into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. We have no idea. Uh, the Lord did not put it in the Scripture. Uh, the time, the day, for a, uh, for a purpose. It's not meant for us to know. In fact, if you flip over into the book of Acts, chapter 1, uh, Acts 1, uh, verse 7 says, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. It's not meant for us to know. Uh I, I, my, in my own opinion, my own understanding, I think the reason for that is that uh, he knew that if he put in there the day and the hour when he had planned to come, uh, people would live any way they wanted to. They'd live like the devil, if you please, uh, and, and uh, wholeheartedly give themselves over to sin until that day or hour. And then they'd, they'd scramble to make things right. So he said, I'm not going to give you that advance notice. No man is going to know the day or the hour. In fact, not even the angels in heaven, it says, know the time that he has uh, uh, in his plan to come. So in uh, Matthew chapter 25, if you look there, it says, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Uh, but people today are living haphazardly. Uh, sin is more rampant today than it's ever been. Uh, all the... All the, the Avenues, all the different things that sin can take you into are more rampant today than they have ever been in history of man. Sin is more prevalent than it ever has been. And people are living uh, just the way that the devil wants them to live. Now, the thing is we have to understand that God has a plan and he has a certain day that he's going to come, uh, but he's not going to tell us that day or that hour because uh, he said to live every day as though it was our last. We've got to live every day of our life just like it's the last day on earth. Amen? And people need to understand that uh, living for God is a 24-7 thing. We can't do it just on Sunday. We can't do it just on uh, Thursday night or Wednesday night. But we've got to live for God seven days a week, 365 days a year, every day of our life. Because we don't know when the end is going to come. Amen. Now in Mark uh, chapter 13, if you want to turn over to Mark 13 verses 26 and 27, 
It says, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds on that day that the Lord has set aside with great power and glory, and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. And in verse in First Thessalonians 5, 1 and 2, it says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. He, uh, in fact, uh, the, the scripture goes on to say, If the good man of the house would have known at what hour the thief was going to come, he would have not suffered his house to be broken up or his goods taken. But you don't know when that thief is going to come. At the hour that you think not uh, is when that thief is going to uh, come to your place. Uh, and that's why the scripture used that reference that he was going to come as a thief in the night. There's not going to be any advance warning. There's not going to be, uh, uh, it's not going to be broadcast on uh, uh, national television. Uh, the Lord's coming the day after tomorrow or next week or next month. It's not going to happen. Uh, nobody is going to be enlightened to the day or the hour until that day. And until that hour, and when we hear the trumpet sound, then we know that the Lord is coming. But it'll be too late, mind you. It'll be too late to change your life then, because then it's done. The scripture tells us that as a man liveth, so shall it be, and as a tree falleth, so shall it lie for a purpose. And that is that as you're living, the very moment that the Lord comes back after his people, that's the way you're going to meet your maker. Not going to be any last minute changes. Not going to be any last moment falling on your knees and saying, God, forgive me, because that time, at that point, grace is done. Grace is over with. And there's not going to be any, any grace to save you if you're living like the devil, when the Lord comes, that's the way you're going out. Amen. So we don't know. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10 says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Let me, let me read that again. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which, now, first of all, it says, the heavens shall pass away. Boom, the heavens are gone. And with a great noise, it said, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The elements, all of the, all of the, the things that, that we see in the heavens, all the, stars and everything are going to melt with a fervent heat. It's all going to fall apart. It's all going to disappear. And then it goes on to say, the earth also and the works that are therein, all the earth and all of the works of the flesh are done. That's the end of it. No, no chance to repent. No chance to change. Uh, but it says, they shall be burned up. Now, Flip over with me, if you will, to Revelations chapter 1. And uh, verse 1 says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Remember, now, Revelations 3 and 3 says, Remember, therefore, hast, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. He's not going to give you advance warning. It, it The warning is... The scripture said, as it was in the days of Noah, Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. They're not going to know until 
The waters came and took them all away. You're not going to know until the Lord splits the eastern skies and steps out at the, with the trumpet and the voice of the archangel. That's it. That's the end right there. No time to repent. You know the time to repent now. This is the only day. The scripture says it like this. This is the day. Now is the appointed time. You, right now, you have to decide to live for God. Forsake your, your, your sinful ways. Forsake all of the, the, the vulgarity of this world and all of the ideology, ideologies and things that man has given you and return to your first love, Jesus Christ. God bless you until we see you again. In Jesus' name, amen.